To me, many questions that are about following instructions are really about guessing and checking answers. So we could create equations here, and I'll show you how to do it at the end, but that is not how I would approach this because I can read it and just see already that there are a lot of instructions in this question. They're kind of hard to follow, and they don't quite fit a normal pattern. So we'll see that when we see the equations themselves. But uh, I have some options, right? So when they say, what is the total number of miles that Morgan biked during the month? It's not like I have to choose a number out of just like thin air, right? And that's why we do algebra is X or whatever could be any number. And so we need to follow the process of algebra to solve for that number. We only have four numbers that this could be, right? It's 80, 100, 120, or 160. Remember, the answer choices are part of the question. They sometimes give you even more helpful information than the question does. So my normal guess and check uh, process here is going to be to start with B. And that's just because it's in the middle and I like B more than C because I don't know, plus 100 is a nice number here. So what does that mean? That's the number of uh, miles that Morgan biked, right? So all of these choices. So 100 biked, if there's a total of 200 miles, that means 100 ran, runned? <laughs> I was about to say runned. So there you go, because there's our 200, right? So it has to add up to 200. And sure enough, that's pretty easy for us to do. Now, the other instruction that you have to follow here has something to do with the number of hours, right? So how am I going to find how many hours? Well, if she's uh, biking at a, at, uh, for B miles at 10 miles an hour, I can think about that, you know, B is now 100. So I can be like, okay, 100 miles of biking at 10 miles per hour, 100 miles divided by 10 miles per hour is going to be 10 hours of biking. And now I can do the same thing for the running, right? That's 100 miles divided by, what do they say there? Five miles per hour. So that's going to be 20 hours. So does that fit, right? She biked for twice as many hours as she ran. No, this is backwards, right? 10 is half of 20, right? We want to bike twice as much. So if, if she's biking for 10 hours, we would expect her to be running for five hours, right? So this is wrong. And now I'd think about like, well, how can I get, how can I get like to the answer, right? I want there to be much more biking. So why don't I go to one of these other choices? I could go to 120, I could go to 160. It really doesn't matter. But the point is I want to go in this direction because I want there to be more biking. So the more hours, the more miles she biked, the more hours she biked, right? So, so literally I'm just going to kind of repeat this process, right? So I don't even need I don't even need the, the the question anymore, right? So I'll just do C out of the sake of like, let's continue the process, right? So this is 120 biked, which means that there's 80 that she ran because that has to add up to 200, so that's good. Uh, and then 120, 120 uh, biked miles divided by 10 is 12 hours. Right, and this is 80 divided by five, that's 16 hours. So again, it doesn't quite match up, right? So that it needs to be more. So it's probably, we're getting closer, right? 10 to 20 is a big jump, but 12 to 16 is a smaller jump. So maybe if we go to 160, we'll kind of finish it off. So let's try that. And I wouldn't just pick it because it's possible I went in the wrong direction and you know, I, I don't know. So that's 160 biked and that means 40 are gonna be ran and that's 200 total, so that still works. And then 160 divided by 10 is 16. And then 80 divided, or, nope, see, be careful. This is the one thing is why showing your work is really important, is the numbers are changing. The process is not changing, right? So 40 divided by five is eight. And look at that, right? This is the amount biked, the number of hours biked. This is the number of hours she ran. And the number, she biked for twice as many hours as she ran. Yes, because 16 is eight times two, right? So there you go. And that's it, D. Notice there is not a variable on my page here. All those X's are just me showing something's wrong, right? So that to me is the best way to do this because I really worry about creating equations that do not follow a traditional format because if I mess them up, now I have a bad equation. I might catch at the end that I have a bad equation, but I might not. I might get an answer that's there or I might end up spending a lot of time working with a bad equation. Now, you might think, well, Mike, didn't you spend a lot of time working with bad numbers as you were doing choices B and C? Yeah, but like those numbers were pretty easy. The process was pretty easy. And if I wasn't talking you through it, it would have taken me about a quarter of the time that it did in this video. So that process is much easier. And I'm thinking about each step individually. Whereas if I go with the equation, 
I have to get all those instructions in one place at the same time and every single piece needs to be perfect. But you saw, right? When I messed up and I originally put 80 here for that number, I caught it, right? I caught it because I, I have numbers and numbers, are, my brain can handle numbers. My brain cannot handle equations, not nearly as well. So the benefit too is if you're doing each step individually, you're kind of checking as you go, you're noticing errors. So all that is good. Let me show you how I would think about the equations though. I think this is such a mess, but let's do it. The, the first equation is pretty simple, right? Because B plus R, B plus R has to equal 200, right? The number of miles biked plus the number of miles that she ran is going to be 200. So that's kind of the same equation I have almost on the left side of this page still, right? Is, is that. Then the other equation, my, my gut wants me to do, uh, let's see, what is it? 10B plus 5R is equal to, I don't even know what, right? Because I don't have a number there. So that's where my gut wants me to go because there are a lot of equations on the SAT like that. But notice that we didn't do uh, multiplication in my process. We did division, right? I took those 100 miles and I said, if this is 10 miles an hour, how many hours is that going to be? And that was very intuitive for me because I had numbers. So what I actually have to do here is I have to go back and I have to think, how am I going to relate the variables that they gave me to the, the rates? So the rates I see is speed is going to be equal to distance over time. And you can memorize that formula or you can just recognize that the units that they give us always tell us that formula, right? So when they talk about the, the, the distance running, five miles per one hour, right? Well, the total number of miles that she ran is R, but we don't know the time that she ran. In fact, they don't, they don't talk about that at all. We don't have another variable for that. So I got to make up another variable. This is annoying. I'm going to make that a big R just to kind of keep it a little bit sane. But now when I start to rearrange this stuff, right, the big R is going to equal the little r over five. So notice there's that division, right? There's the division that, that we saw in my other guess and check process, but that's weird. We don't get that a lot on the SAT. So that means when we do it with the B, just to kind of skip some steps here, we're going to have the big B that I'm making up. That's the number of hours, right? So that's going to be the little B over 10. And now I get back to this equation here. She biked for twice as many hours as she ran. So, oh boy, I'm going to mess this up. Uh, she biked for twice as many hours as she ran. So let's go right here with this. Um, so the, the 2R, big R, is going to equal B. Let me just make sure that's right. She biked twice as many hours as she ran. So you take the number of hours that she ran and you multiply it by two. Part of me really wants it to be R equals 2B, but that's wrong. And again, this is why instructions are hard to follow when you're doing algebra is the numbers, we can't really kind of check it as we go. But that should be it, which means now if I take these two equations and substitute them in there, oof, I get two times R over five is equal to b over 10. Oh my God, that's a crazy equation. So at that point, I would say that let's pretend b is x and y is r. And rather than solve this thing with any more algebra, I would go to Desmos and let Des Desmos do it. So x plus y is equal to 200. I hope this works. I genuinely don't know if it's going to work. Uh, 2 times uh, X, nope, see, be careful. This is another thing that happens. It's got to be Y. Y is my R over five uh, is equal to, is equal to uh, X divided by 10. So we solved for, what is the total number of miles? So we solved for B. So B is X. Let's see if when these things collide, we get the number that we're supposed to get. So here they are. 160 and oh boy that's the same answer so it worked it worked but oh boy that sucks right i mean put it in the comments vote vote for your favorite would you rather guess and check here or would you rather come up with those equations do you think you could have come up with those equations if time is running out and you're in that hard module and you need to move on and get on to the next question people always talk about running out of time in the hard module because they're like oh there's questions i never saw before this is a question that on its face I never saw before. I've never seen a story like this on any SAT. I've been doing this for 15 years. But I don't think of this as a new question. 
I think of this as the same kind of thing I've done doing for 15 years on hard math questions. They give you a story, you got to interpret it, and you got to work it through. And you have two options. You can either make equations or you can work with the answer choices and test them out and guess and check. And I always choose to guess and check. I think many of you never learn that skill and you're always like, oh, I got to build equations, got to make out some algebra stuff. And that's where you go wrong because you're not able to adapt and you're not and and you either make the wrong equations or you take too long on it and you have to give up on it but for me I without any hesitation was guessing and checking here and even if I wasn't given answer choices I still would have guessed and checked here I would have picked a number like 100 to start because I've been like let's just say it's 50-50 it's 100 on each side right what happens then then I can readjust and pick some new numbers and I'd always pick numbers that kind of work out nice and I have a calculator to help me but like there is no part of me that would ever have even thought to make equations here as soon as I read how weird this story is. Like th there's some stories that are pretty easy to spot, but this is not one of them. And so you have to be prepared. If you want to get a 700 plus on math consistently, a 750 plus, you need to look at a question like this and instantly go, I'm going to guess and check. This isn't as weird as it seems. I've got a plan. And most people don't have a plan. And that's why when that math gets weird, they panic.